and you guys actually haven't seen this aquarium before. Grow up multiple generations of Leilipi fry together. I probably shouldn't have put the fry in there. I've never seen her do that. That was interesting. I just learned something new there. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be doing my November 2021 fish room update tour. So let's get straight into the video. So the first tank getting an update this month is this one. And you guys actually haven't seen this aquarium before. So this is a brand new aquascape on this aquarium. Not the greatest aquascape by any means, but uh, it now contains my gold Alto Lampro Logos compressor seps, my gold comps. Uh, these guys were in the top row of tanks. Uh, I purchased them, put them in a quarantine aquarium for about six weeks. I then plugged that aquarium into the sump system and uh, I just kept them in there because I had nowhere else to put them. And that aquarium was one foot wide by two foot long by just over a foot high. Uh, and again, there's three of them. So now they're in this aquarium, which is two foot long by two foot wide by 14 inches high. So more than enough room for these guys to grow out in. Uh, as you can see, they're at the back there. They are very, very shy, extremely shy fish. So I'm thinking of adding guppies to this aquarium and they would be female guppies. Uh, I wouldn't add male guppies because the fanning of the male guppy's tail would draw the attention of the calvus a little bit too much uh, and uh, they might try to nip at the tail of those guppies. So I like to add female guppies to aquariums where uh, the fish are a little bit skittish. That would hopefully make the compressor seps feel a little bit more at ease. They'll see some other fish in the aquarium swimming around in the open and then they will believe that there's no predators around. When you have fish that are shy or skittish, uh, that are in an aquarium with no other fish, they may think that because there's no other fish around, that means that there, are, that there may be predators around. So they will tend to hide more. If you add fish to the aquarium that swim in the open water, they'll feel more at ease, and that might encourage them to come more into the open as they'll feel comfortable that there aren't any predators around because the guppies are swimming in the open water. If there were predators around, the guppies would hide, which will in turn make these guys hide as well. So just something to consider if you guys have skittish fish, uh, the fish that are shy, add some guppies or something else to the aquarium, just to, uh, that isn't as aggressive obviously as the fish you're trying to bring out into the open, make them feel more at ease. And, uh, and they basically are acting as dither fish. And that is the point of having dither fish. It helps spread aggression amongst aggressive fish. Uh, the compressor seps are by no means aggressive. They like to keep to themselves. Uh, I had them in uh, a tank with some Neolamprologus similis, some small shell dwelling cichlids from Lake Tanganyika, which are extremely similar to Multifasciatus. And the similis were keeping the compressor seps at bay. Now, compressor seps grow a lot larger than similis do. However, similis are uh, a little bit more aggressive than the uh, compressor seps at this size. So I eventually took those similis out of the aquarium, considering now adding guppies to this aquarium, just to bring them out of the open, make them feel a little bit more at ease in this tank. And plus, I wanna see them more. As you can see on camera, there are two, uh, and they are the smallest two. The largest compressor seps I have in this aquarium is actually behind the rock on the left, and it is pretty much double the size of the two guys you see in the center of the aquarium. And hopefully I'll be able to get some footage for you guys so you can see uh, how big that compressor seps actually is. And their color is beautiful as well. Very, very vivid gold. Uh, so I'm looking forward to breeding these guys hopefully in the future, but that will be about a year or two off considering their small size at the moment. So you can see they've also done, dug some pits around the rock work that I have in here. And again, this isn't really an really awe-inspiring aquascape by any means, but I just wanted to get them out of their small aquarium and into something more permanent so they can feel more at ease and start to exhibit their natural behavior, which is digging under rocks and uh, putting some shells in here, which I haven't actually done yet. Considering their size and how slow they grow, it's probably gonna take at least another year before we see any spawning activity from these guys. I also have to add in some shells once I get some more. So yeah guys, there you go, my Alto Lamprologus Compressor Seps Aquarium. And the next tank getting an update this month is this one, and it is actually an aquarium that you guys haven't seen before. This houses my Gelidochromus regani fry as well as breeding trio. I moved these guys out of the tank. You just saw the gold Alto Lamprologus Compressor Seps in. These guys were all born in that aquarium, and uh, the breeding trio are with them in this tank now. Now, when I moved all of the Gelidochromus regani into this aquarium, I did it in haste. I tried to do it very quickly because I was changing around four aquariums in the one day. 
and I had a lot to do that day and I just really needed to get it done quickly to make way for all the fry that I have coming through. So because of that, I should have taken that opportunity to separate the fry from their parents, but I didn't. I just scooped all the regani out of their tank and popped them straight into this aquarium, which in hindsight, I shouldn't have done. I should have put the regani fry in a separate aquarium, let the trio, the breeding trio, settle down in this tank and uh, hopefully spawn them again. That, was, that should have been my intention, but I didn't do that. Halfway through putting the fry in this aquarium with their parents, I tried to comfort my uh, haste and thoughts and said to myself, well, adding the fry to the aquarium might not be a bad thing because uh, Regani adults, their bond can break. Uh, it isn't a very strong bond. And I figured I should add the fry just to ensure that that bond is there. If I was just to add the breeding trio to a brand new aquarium with brand new aquascaping, there may have been fights amongst the three Regani and uh, their bond may have broken resulting in possibly one or two of the Regani dying from fights. And so I figured I should continue to put all the fry in with the parents just to suppress the aggression. Like I said with the gold Alto Lamprologus compressor seps tank, I'm actually thinking of adding dither fish, the guppies to the tank, uh, to act as dither fish, to uh, uh, make those fish feel comfortable and at ease in the aquarium. Dither fish also uh, stop aggression or help suppress aggression amongst cichlids. So uh, the fry uh, are in here basically to act as dither fish to stop aggression amongst the trio, the breeding trio. So uh, that is what I said to myself as to why I would continue adding the fry into this aquarium with the parents. It is actually on the small side for this many cichlids uh, and I really am in fact going to move out all the fry and put them into a four by two by two foot aquarium and I will leave the parents in this aquarium eventually, uh, but I just haven't gotten around to doing it. Like I said, I did move uh, these guys in this aquarium in haste pretty quick, uh, and I actually didn't uh, realize, I did actually honestly didn't consider at the time move, separating the parents from the fry, uh, but yeah, halfway through doing it is when I realized oh, I probably shouldn't have put the fry in there. But there you go, the new aquarium from my Gilladochromis Regani breeding trio. And guys, I thought I'd show you this aquarium again because basically I love it. Uh, my Neolamprologus Leilupi Aquarium, this is my original breeding pair. I just wanted to show you guys the progress of the fry, how large they've gotten since you last saw this aquarium a month ago. Uh, they haven't gotten too large. They are about the one centimeter mark and uh, they're about oh, five to six weeks old here, I believe. And um, I do also think I'm starting to see some color, some yellow color coming through on the fry but I'm not sure, it might be just my eyes playing tricks with me. But anyway, you can see on the right there, the actual bonded pair, the breeding pair, uh, they're still looking after their fry and they're showing signs of wanting to spawn again. Now these guys have spawned twice since this spawn that you see here, this free swimming. Uh, since these guys were born, the breeding pair have spawned twice for me. And unfortunately, the instinct of the female Leilupi hasn't kicked in. She hasn't protected that new spawn and these fry have had a feast on those babies, unfortunately. So they ate the eggs uh, the second time and the, the, the first time they actually ate the hatched wiggling fry. Uh, not much you can do about that, unfortunately. Uh, to, to catch these fry out, this amount of fry in an aquarium with this many rocks would be a massive undertaking and it would really stress out my bonded pair, my Leilupi uh, breeding pair. So to avoid that uh, issue, uh, I just let nature run its course. Unfortunately, like I said, the female didn't protect her brood. They usually do protect their younger fry from the older generations of fry. I've got another Leilupi breeding pair. The female does protect the, the, young, the, the younger fry from the older generations of fry in the one aquarium. So I can, in that other breeding pair tank, grow up multiple generations of Leilupi fry together. But for some reason, this female has stopped doing that. But that's okay. I really, at, unfortunately at the moment, don't have the room for additional fry. Uh, COVID lockdown has prevented me from being able to sell my fish by my usual methods. Uh, but things opening up now, uh, hopefully that's gonna change soon. But yeah, anyway, I just thought I'd show you this tank just so you can see the progress of the fry and how big they've grown in six weeks. And the last tank getting an update this month is this one. And again, another tank you guys haven't seen yet. Uh, this is now housing my breeding trio of Neolamprologus brevis sunspot. On the left there you can see the large male 
uh, hovering above two shells where both his females reside in. And um, it's quite interesting to see the behavior shift from uh, how I used to have them in the big two foot cubes. Uh, you, before, uh, both females were far apart from each other, uh, basically at opposite ends of the aquarium. And now they coexist within the span of about five inches, which really surprises me. Um, whenever the, in the old aquarium, when the, one of the female Brevis sunspot used to come up towards the other female, the male would chase her away back to her shell uh, at the back of the aquarium. When this female, uh, and I believe it is the one in the middle, because she's always inhabited that shell and the other female has always inhabited the larger looking marine kind of snail shell on the left there. Uh, he's, he's, his main original female is the female with uh, the big marine shell on the left, not the shell he's above right now. Uh, that female that just popped out of the shell then, uh, she was at the back of the aquarium. And yeah, he, all, he would always shoo her away from his other female. Uh, and then she started to try and get closer to the male. But then that female that's right near the male right now, she started to try to move closer to the front of the aquarium, nearer to the male, because the male was spending so much time with the female on the left there. Uh, and he used to attack her pretty severely and uh, belted her you know, pretty badly. Uh, but she persisted and uh, she's pretty much won out now. And uh, yeah, he's, he's right at home with uh, the male uh, all the time right next to the other female. It's, it's quite interesting to see how that persistence has paid off uh, and she's gotten more attention from her man, uh, which is quite, quite cute and funny to see. But yeah, these guys were in a, an aquarium on the top row for a number of weeks, way longer than I wanted. Uh, in a bare bottom tank, mind you, no sand. These guys like to dig a little bit. Uh, there was no sand in that aquarium. Again, it was a two foot long by one foot wide by 14 inch high tank. And I had moved them in there because I uh, wanted to move my breeding pair, a loopy breeding pair, the other tank you had just saw, uh, into that aquarium. And the Brevis were originally in that Leilupi aquarium. So to do that, I had to move these guys out of that tank and into one of the grow out tanks. And I did intend them to only stay in that grow out tank for a max of one to two days and that turned into a couple of weeks. And eventually they spawned in that grow out tank with no sand in that grow out tank, just a number of, just a number of shells, the same amount of shells you see here. And uh, the, these are the fry that they've, they, that hatched in that grow out tank. And I moved them in with the parents here, uh, basically because I have nowhere else to put these fry, unfortunately. And again, I am running out of aquariums, but uh, I've got some plans that are coming up in the next few weeks and I might have some new tanks for grow out in this fish room, which I will show you guys in upcoming videos. But anyway, yeah, these guys are shell dwellers. They uh, like to dig a little bit, and you probably can't tell on camera, but this is a, actually a very shallow sand bed. It's about one to two centimeters deep at, at its thickest. Uh, and yeah, that's just basically because my brevis, your brevis might be different, but my brevis don't dig anywhere near as much as you would expect. I used to have them, like I said, in the Leilupi Aquarium. You saw how much sand is in that tank, how much sand was built up to the front of the aquarium. Uh, completely unnecessary for these guys because they just don't dig anywhere near as much as other shell dwelling cichlids from Lake Tanganyika, such as Neolamprologus multifasciatus or Neolamprologus uh, similis, or even Lamprologus ocellatus gold. They, they dig a lot more than these guys as well. So. Brevis, if you're going to keep them, I do recommend you do have a sand bed in there with them because that will provide some camouflage for the fry. My fry do pick on the younger siblings, so uh, if you have some uh, pull filter sand or some type of substrate in there, that will help the fry camouflage against the sand. And I have done an in-depth species profile on these fish, if you want to watch it. All we need to know about breeding Neolamprologus brevis sunspot, you can watch that video right here. And they are quite interesting and actually funny fish to watch. Watch the behavior of these fish. You can see the males going in the shell with the female, uh, shoving, shoving her in there. He actually might be spawning with her right now. I've got no idea. There you go, the female just pushed him out of the shell. I've never seen her do that. That was interesting. I just learned something new there. Uh, and he was, he was taking it. He was accepting that. He, she shoved him out. Uh, normally he's, yeah, pretty much the bully of the aquarium. But anyway, there you go, guys. My Neolamprologus brevis sunspot tank.
So there you have it guys, my November 2021 Fish Room Update Tour. Really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment, and consider subscribing to the channel. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.